Hello and welcome to this lesson on calculating the difference between two days. Now this is quite a common task to have to perform in Excel. Now where people are usually trying to find out how many days until some kind of due date or some kind of deadline, some kind of expiry, this sort of situation. And that's what I will try to imagine here to show a couple of different date calculations to kind of get the ball rolling in that regard because using formulas with with dates is one of the more common things to do in Excel. So in cell A2 I have this future date. Uh, so today I think is the 6th, 17th of August 2016 I think. Um, so the future date here 10th of November. Yeah, it may not be the future when you guys are, are watching this video. And in cell B2, I want to know what's the difference between today's date and that date. But not only do I want to know the difference between like today, as I say it, 17th of August 2016, but I want this to always work. So when tomorrow comes, and I will call that today, I need Excel to work with that. It will always know what the current date is and perform the correct calculation. So it is automated. So in cell B2, I'll start with my equal sign, like we spoke about on a previous lesson. All formulas start with equals. I'll click on the date in cell A2, so this imaginary kind of due date, this kind of deadline. And I'm just going to subtract, and what I'm going to subtract is not the 17th of August 2016, it's going to be a function called today. Now as I'm typing this you can see it tells you its job is to return the current date. Um, as you can probably guess by its name it probably has the perfect name you could give this function. Which is great, it certainly helps us. And as I write in this function followed by an opening bracket as part of its name the blue box below lets me know that there are no arguments with this function. So it just tells you to put a closing bracket. You see that there, there's no questions, no arguments, which is quite rare. I think there's six, seven functions in Excel, something like that, where you don't have to supply any arguments. It's just very strange be behavior, really. But this is a function that doesn't need any information, not from us. It will get the date from the computer's clock. So with that on the board, I'll press Enter simply subtracting whatever today's date is from that date, a date that I know is in the future, so is larger than today's date, and that will leave the remainder. Now that may look a bit strange on screen, believe it or not, that's the right answer. But Excel, trying to be clever here, has given me the result in a date format. With that cell selected, I'm just going to pop up to the drop down list I have on home. You can do this however you want to do this. Uh, you might want to right mouse click and format cells. And I'll just choose general, and now it looks much more appropriate. I went 85 days. Uh, don't show me that number in date form. That's pretty useless to me right now. And there we go. Uh, take my word for it. If you were to open this file tomorrow, that would say 84. You know, as it counts down how many days, like every calendar day, until that date. Okay, now that function was great, but in the next column, I want to show one more example before this video is over, and that is calculating the difference in working days only. So I don't want every day, you know, maybe I don't want to include weekends. Maybe there's other dates that I don't wish to include, for whatever reason that may be. Now, the typical thing people will think about are bank holidays and that kind of scenario, which is true, and you may want to include or exclude, depending on how you look at it, from the formula here, from the calculation. But depending on what you're doing this stuff, you may wish to explain to Excel that a date is non-working uh, for other reasons, other business reasons. You know, whether other projects are taking up time, or whether we're talking about uh, kind of strike action, or bad weather, or things that may come in and, and prevent work happening on a particular job, or a particular promotion or yeah, whatever it may be that you're working on. Now the function in question here is a function called network days. So there's another function to our list here 
Indeed, you can probably add, say you're adding two to your list here because there's two network days functions. Uh, we have the kind of original one, if you will, and its job is to return how many work days between two dates, which is exactly what I want to do. Fantastic. There's also like an international version that will allow you to tweak some of its parameters. So it's a bit more flexible. The network days function, we're going to use the first one. This will automatically assume uh, or will automatically exclude the weekends. The weekends being Saturday and Sunday. And now uh, living in the UK, that is a weekend for us. Might not necessarily be for your business, um, you know, but uh, the assumption is that that's what most people are going for. They are typical working hours, working week. So, and that's what we're going to assume, that's what we're going to go for. The other one will give you the option of tweaking that and saying, you know, that only Sunday is a weekend or that Friday and Saturday is the weekend. And basically tweaking it to your leisure, really. Now, with this original one, let me double click its name. We have three arguments. So one of the reasons I'm using this, this example, you know, one of the reasons is how popular calculating dates is. Another one is just to get us used to seeing these arguments coming up and used to writing functions. It's all confidence, it's all practice. That's how we get this stuff done. And here we can see there's three arguments. The first two are mandatory, the last one is optional. We know that because of the square brackets written around it. Now I'm going to use all three. Now the start date in this scenario is going to be that today function. And I'll type that straight in because we've spoken about it. We know it. Comma. Now to separate the arguments of this function. The second question. What's the end date? That's going to be the date that I have written in A2. 10th of November 2016. Comma, the holidays question meaning, are there any other dates apart from Saturday and Sunday, which will naturally exclude because that's what the function does, are there any other dates that you'd like excluded? Um, yes, there are. And what I've done here is at the bottom I have another sheet tab called non-working days. I'm going to click on that. And I've entered three dates on here, which I'm now going to highlight. Now, the first one being a uh, in the UK, that's a summer holiday date for this year. And the other two are just made up. Yeah, I'm imagining that uh, there's some reason that work cannot happen at day. And I'm explaining that to Excel. Now, at the top, we can see, I don't know how well you can see this video at the moment. You're about to see it better. But you've got a reference to the sheet that we spoke about on a previous lesson. And then the A2 to A4. Just going to put a close bracket there for the function and press enter to run it. I'm going to have to assume this stuff is correct, but 59, you know, sets so the working days. That's Monday to Friday. This is a seven day week. So actually, it's a smaller number and looks about right. Uh, that is the function now on screen, much clearer. We can see the non working days reference. That's the sheet, exclamation mark after a sheet name, and then the range reference A2 to A4 three different cells. Then we press escape to pull out that and they are two more functions into our uh, little collection there. One called today, really really useful function. I mean that's, that's huge. That's one of the most popular functions of Excel. There's probably a decent chance you'll use that. Network days, well that's much less so. There's a decent chance you won't ever use that. <laughs> but it is another example of a function they're all written the same, so getting this practice in will definitely make us strong Excel formula creators, shall we say.